Hello, all my little buns, and welcome to another video essay by yours truly, Cyber Bunny Mark. On today's video, I'm going to talk about a little game by the name of Honkai Star Rail and how it taught me to appreciate and love gacha games. But before I do that, let's get the usual YouTuber thing out of the way. <clears throat> if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to turn on notifications, and make sure to like and comment on the video. <sighs> Sometimes it's annoying to do that, but I remind myself, mama's gotta get them sub somehow. Anyways, let's begin. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, a gacha game utilizes the mechanic from the popular gacha pawn vending machines. You put money into the machine, turn the dial, and pray that the toy you wanted pops out of the machine. With gacha games, instead of a toy, you get a virtual husbando or waifu. Now, I was already familiar with gacha games thanks to everyone going feral over Genshin Impact. And at the time, I just never really understood all the hype. I thought it was crazy that people were playing this game and pumping loads of money into it just to get their favorite waifu or husbando of the month. I thought to myself, these people are insane. They're just falling into a trap made to consume your hard-earned cash. Paying money just to get a digital waifu or husbando is wild. It's capitalism at its finest. And you won't ever catch me doing that. And for a while, I managed to avoid it all. That was until I learned about Honkai Star Rail. I first learned about Honkai Star Rail through a few friends in a Discord that I'm in. They started talking about how they were excited for this new game from Hoyoverse and how it would be the next big thing. It was the day before the release, so I decided to look into it. I learned it was going to be a turn-based RPG instead of an action one by Genshin. And boy, am I a sucker for a good turn-based RPG. I saw a few screenshots and the art style really stood out to me. I told myself, it looked cool. So tomorrow, I'll download it, install it, and give it a shot. The day had come, it was ready to go, and I booted it up. The opening of the game starts with a full view of Herta Space Station while Canon in D begins to play. You know shit is about to be good when you hear classical music playing. The scene then cuts to a beautiful woman named Kafka standing there playing air violin as absolute chaos began to unfold. I felt goosebumps and I was captivated by every moment. Once the intro was done, we cut back to mommy or er, I mean Kafka talking to a mysterious voice on the screen Seems who we like later find out to be it. Silverwood. No, no. I think you couldn't have timed it better. After a brief conversation with Silverwolf, the tutorial mission begins. We take control of Kafka and immediately get thrown into gameplay. As I'm introduced to the basics of combat, I love the simplicity of it. You have a basic attack, a skill, and an ultimate ability. Your basic attack, skills, and getting hit fill up the ultimate gauge, and you're able to cast it freely once it's ready, allowing you to even interrupt enemy turns. The animations for all those attacks, skills, and ultimates are visually stunning. Between the anime-inspired art style and the turn-based combat, I was reminded of Persona 5, one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. Shortly after, the tutorial mission comes to a close. At this point, we're introduced to the main character, which the player gets to choose a gender for. I went with the female MC, Stella? Or Stel... Stelly? Somebody let me know how it's pronounced in the comments. And then, I began my journey through the stars. Now, I've spent close to 335 hours playing this game, so needless to say, I'm head over heels in love with it. And I found so many reasons to fall in love with the game. I could go on and on about it, but to keep this video as short as possible, I'll sum it up with a few talking points. The first being the story. Honkai Star Rail follows the adventures of the Trailblazers, made up of the main character, March 7th, Dan Hang, Welt, and Mami, I, I mean Himiko. It follows the JRPG philosophy of man punching gods in the face, with the gods being the various aeons in the game, as well as the Stellarons, which are also known as the Cancer of Worlds. Pretty ominous, right? Some of these aeons want to see the world burn, and some of them are actually already dead. You bounce from planet to planet on this mission to punch gods while meeting a colorful cast of characters, reminding us that the real treasure is the friends we made along the way. There's more to the story, but I've given you the cliff notes. If you want to know more, I've linked a few videos that summarize it, or you can just play the game. The next talking point is the gameplay. I briefly touched upon how combat works, but there's even more depth to it thanks to team building. 
Characters have elements attached to them to exploit weaknesses, status effects that they can inflict, and because of this, some units synergize better with others. It goes even deeper as you have relics and light cones that modify the various stats helping you create stronger units and teams. In terms of gameplay modes, you have basic story missions which lead you to unlock more modes such as Memory of Chaos, which is sort of like a Bosch Rush mode, and Simulated Universe, which brings a roguelike element to Honkai Star Rail. You've also got various modes to farm your leveling materials and relics, such as Calyxes and Caverns of Corrosion. The game offers a lot you can do outside of the story, and there's even seasonal events that change things up like Ethereum Wars, which is the Honkai Star Rail equivalent of Pokemon, and a Foxy and Tale of the Haunted, which is like Ghostbusters meets social media management. Now, with the gameplay summed up, I have one final talking point, which I feel is the most important of them all. The waifus. The no, the characters. I'm gonna be honest with you. This game is loaded with hot waifus and husbandos. You love mommies? We've got Kafka, Himiko, Serval, and the newly added Ruin Mei. You like himbos? We've got Sampo, Jingyuan, and Argenti. You like them strong and silent? Let me introduce you to Jing Liu, Blade, and Dan Heng. But they aren't all just show. Each and every single one of them is so well designed, not just in terms of visual aesthetic, but also gameplay and lore. It was because of this, I finally understood Genshin players and the appeal of simping over these fictional characters, as well as throwing my money at them just to make sure I have them on my roster. Do I need Rune Mei? No. But do I want her? Yes. You bet your ass I'm going to pull for Psychopath Mad Scientist Mommy. Speaking of pulls, now would be a good time to get into the most important part of Star Rail, and any gacha game for that matter, the monetization. Gacha games can be intimidating because of one big factor, money. I'm sure plenty of you have heard stories of people throwing down hundreds, and in some cases, thousands of dollars just to get the character they love and make sure it's as strong as possible. Because of this, it causes a lot of free-to-play people to be hesitant to dive in. But Honkai Star Rail is very generous to its players and loves to make it rain when it comes to free currency. Every patch there's a major event that rewards you with a ton of free Stellar Jades, the currency used to buy pulls. There's also check-in events that give you 10 free pulls for simply logging in. We've got the new player bonus too that grants you free pulls just for installing the game and getting your Trailblazer level up. Oh. And whenever the game has maintenance, you get free jades as compensation for the game being down. Hoyoverse is like Oprah. You get free Stellar Jades, and you get free Stellar Jades, and you get free Stellar Jades. We're all getting free Stellar Jades. The generosity gets even wilder though. Honkai Star Rail won Mobile Game of the Year at the Gamer Awards. And because of this, Hoyoverse decided to give us another free 10 pulls. And when Dr. Ratio comes out in the next banner, everyone's getting him for free. Yes. A paid 5 star character will be given away for free to everyone from simply logging in. In an era where free to play games, filled with microtransactions and cash grabs, Honkai Star Rail slaps all of them in the face. No, uh. Now when you take into consideration how great the story is, how amazing the characters are, how fun the gameplay is, and how generous they are for free to play players, it was hard for me to not fall in love. As I mentioned before, I used to think people were crazy for playing Genshin, or any gacha game, and pouring loads of money into it. But now, I have seen the light, and now, I'm in love with gacha games. I'm actually tempted to check out Genshin Impact. Everyone keeps telling me the story and gameplay are great, and much like Honkai Star Rail, the character design is amazing. Another gacha game I've been thinking about as well is Nikkei, but I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm in it for the booba and booty physics. There's also unreleased games that have caught my eye, such as Zenless Zone Zero from Hoyoverse, and another cool looking game called Project Mugen. But will these be able to stand out in a market filled with gacha games where Genshin is still dominating? And most of all, will they be able to stand out for me after how well Honkai Star Rail has treated me? Only time will tell. But for now, I'm more than content with all the content in Mommy's Star Rail has to offer. With all of that being said, thank you for watching my video. How many of y'all are playing Honkai Star Rail? Who's your favorite character? And if you're not playing Star Rail, what gacha games are you playing? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, hit subscribe, and tap the notification bell to know when my next video goes live. Thanks for watching my little buns, behave, stay safe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.